I think what it really comes down to, if you want to create the right culture within your organization around this, is you have to identify it as a priority from the top. Then you have to take action, which is your training, and then you have to measure. And that's really what's important because if you don't measure it, it can't be important. Nobody's going to, and when you measure it, you're, you're, the message you're sending to everybody is that it's important. And when you measure it, you can also create accountability. And that's what also is really important within an organization. Is just, there has to be an accountability created at all levels around this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And once you do this and it gets implemented and it's done well on a regular basis, it just becomes part of your culture. It just becomes one of those things that people do. It's kind of like, you know, you know, prior to having, you know, fobs and all these sorts of things, you know, the last person out of the office just knew they had to lock the door. <laughs> you know, you didn't have to tell people that it was just intuitive that they knew that. Um, and that's kind of a silly example and a simple example, perhaps, but that's what I'm really trying to get at is that that's what I mean by unconsciously competent. People will just naturally do the right things. They want to, people want to do the right things. They just don't know. They just don't know what it is and they don't know why it's important unless you tell them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Brent? Yeah, I, at the risk of just piling on, I mean, I'll throw in a cliche to go with it. Uh, they say culture eats strategy for breakfast. And this is an area where that's absolutely the case. Because uh, if you don't have that, then you have incident response plans gathering dust and you have policies that people don't read. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of this is uh, looking hard at the culture of your organization and just sort of baking it right into, we're going to mix metaphors here, baking it right into the DNA of the organization so that it just becomes what people do. Uh, it, it, it doesn't become an obstacle or something that they have to deal with uh, on, a, on an occasional basis. And really everything has to stem from that. Uh, some organizations, I think that's easier uh, because they understand the nature of their organizations. They deal with information of a particular kind, health organizations, that sort of thing. Uh, others uh, that are more commercially bent, it's more, of a, uh, it's more of a struggle, but you have to figure out a way to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Amalia, you've got the last word. Very, very quickly. I keep trying to tell our clients let's do simulation exercises. Let's scare people. Let's wake them up one morning and say, this happened. Um, let's uh, make them understand the consequences. What are they going to miss? I, when I talk to my students, I always say, we got to look in the eye of the senior VP and say, uh, you're not going to have a gift under the Christmas tree this year because you're not getting that bonus, you know? So I think it needs to hit home for people. You've created this breach we're part of it guess what we're gonna we're gonna have to fire 15 people not because they've done something wrong we just took a big hit yep. yeah fantastic uh, you've all said understand what the challenge is and create a training and awareness program that arrives at vigilance by understanding company culture and by understanding the types of assets that are being protected. So uh, with that, thank you very much to all of our panelists and thanks to everyone who attended in the audience.